It's important to understand how Teach for All came to be. Um, this wasn't about me waking up and thinking we need to go global. It was it was really that in a particular year, about 10 years ago, um, there was just something in the water in the rest of the world. I mean, within one year, I had met 13 people in 13 different countries who, for one reason or another, were just determined to, to do something similar to what I had done at Teach for America, what um, the, the folks in the UK had done through Teach First um, in their own countries. And they were looking for help. And ultimately, that led to the idea that we should launch a separate organization, um, which we've called Teach for All, that would essentially have the mission of accelerating the impact of this approach around the world. So almost because we started in that way, we set up Teach for All as a network of independent, locally led, governed, funded organizations with a central global organization um, essentially committed to accelerating impact, helping these organizations get bigger and better earlier than they otherwise might through fostering learning and sharing across the network. I think um, probably the the one of the core principles that, that has informed every choice that we make at Teach for All uh, is just the notion that you know, really maximizing impact will be about two things working together. It will be about a visionary, strong, independent social entrepreneur in a local context with a vision for adapting this approach into their context and really just with full ownership for, for driving towards impact, um, that that ingredient is totally critical and, and at the same time um, will move so much more quickly if we are sharing solutions globally. So the notion of locally rooted, globally informed is is kind of a value that's at the core of, of every decision we, we make. All across the Teach for All network, we are working to address essentially the opportunity gap, the fact that whole segments of kids face incredible challenges um, and show up at schools when we're lucky enough for them to show up at schools that were never set up to meet their extra needs and there's just a huge set of mindsets and policies and practices that fuel um, that very complex set of factors that ultimately lead to the reality that, you know, the circumstances of kids' birth predict their educational outcomes and in turn life outcomes. So given how complex that issue is, we know that no one thing is, is going to solve this problem. Like we're going to need a lot of change, a lot of change within classrooms, within schools, within school systems, and also outside of our schools and school systems in order to take some of the pressure off of schools. We're going to need policy change. We're, we're really going to need a, a very significant set of changes. So the big question that keeps all of us across the Teach for All network up at night is the question of who is going to do all of this? especially in a world where we routinely channel the energy of our kind of most educated, most promising future leaders everywhere but towards that very complex set of issues. So that's what we're working to change, to say we want to reach the day when not just a few, but many of our society's most promising future leaders are channeling their energy into that arena and are in turn themselves working to, you know, contribute to and unleash the leadership in among their students, among their colleagues in schools and, and in the broader communities, all in pursuit of growing enough local leadership capacity necessary to actually um, address this issue. When we think about an enabling policy environment um, for, for our work, we think about an environment that w wherein you know, we can actually bring talent into the system, into classrooms, and actually you know, in other parts of the system as well from non-traditional sources. So it includes alternative pathways into teaching so that folks who may have a real inclination to teach and, and may want to be part of this broader effort and to begin their journey in classrooms, but for whatever reason decided to have undergraduate majors in other fields can actually find a pathway in. At the same time, it means even alternative pathways for school leaders. In some countries, 
it takes years and years and years um, to become a school principal, and yet we've seen that much earlier in, in folks' career trajectories, they, they can develop the skills and, and capabilities to, to lead schools. So thinking differently about pathways into principalships, finding other ways to um, foster social entrepreneurship, um, finding ways to, to channel the energy of people who have experience at the front line in classrooms and to get them into positions of influence in policy earlier than they otherwise might. So, so that's how we think about what an enabling policy environment might be. I think what we've learned is, I mean, the last 10 or so years in this work globally have been so affirming about the need for this. I think we've seen that um, the need for strengthening local leadership capacity is even greater in developing context than, than it is in, in the very developed context in which I first got started with Teach for America. At the same time, we've really come to, to see that as, as locally rooted as all change must be, there's such a power in facilitating learning across borders. I think that's probably been one of the biggest surprises for me personally, is just to see how similar the roots of what we call educational inequity or the opportunity gap are. They're, they're really eerily similar, and, and the silver lining in that is that the solutions are shareable. So we're envisioning, ultimately, a world where we have all these kind of the rising generation of leaders in this who are connected with each other and actually learning from each other across borders. And I think if we can pair these things, much stronger local leadership capacity and platforms to enable those leaders to learn from each other across borders, we can kind of radically accelerate the pace of change.